cameras for, for the other shit. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, son. All right. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, hello, <laughs> hello to everyone out there in streaming land. If you happen to be seeing this, we will be starting here in just a moment. There's Tad Western. He joins us. Yeah, howdy. He's in charge of Tad Talk. A highly popular podcast here on the one point two Network. million downloads in Ankara, Turkey. Just alone, yeah, hour. alone in Turkey. Yeah. Well, you know what they say about Turkey? It's more than just for Thanksgiving. Tad. Wow. I, don't do that ever again. <laughs> well, <laughs> Lasso his ass right here. So we what? I got my Indiana Jones whip. Hit him with the Spurs. Jones? Spangle podcast yeah. harder. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh oh. What are you doing? No, we were. Uh, she, I, I, I didn't. I didn't know what I wanted to start with for the first twenty minutes, but she's agreed to let us talk about something that has me triggered. More, more, uh, you, more. Uh, yeah, no, not, not me. That. I didn't do anything, did no, I? No, I'm self conscious. Uh, let's see here. Are we live right Watch now? Watch. Yes. Oh yes, we are live. I would never say that about Greg. How dare you? What would you? What wouldn't you say? Say it in the microphone so people. Please do. I'm just waiting for a reason to be able to stop talking to you. <laughs> Greg. Well, college is going Bot. to accomplish that. Don't worry. Hey. Starts tomorrow. Ball State. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not kicking around. Let's have a. Let's want me to never come back <laughs> like this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How many times can we vote? <laughs> I'm I'm kidding because I feel like the, <sighs> the, all of the answers would be very true and I'd be sad. I know. Remember that one time when you actually thought I didn't like you? <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Strength like me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not talk like that. <laughs> you do whine like that, though. Dad, <gasps> I used to like you. You still no, do. No, you didn't. <laughs> you, wow. She loves me. What are you talking about? Yeah, Tad and I go way back. She DMs me all the time. That actually doesn't happen. But <laughs> Is everybody off the Wi-Fi? Yes. Everybody off the Wi-Fi? I'm Jeez, you're very you. particular about the Wi-Fi. Let me well, just real quick ever since water Harry my crops set it up. in Farmville. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. we have to be off the uh, Wi-Fi because I have terrible Wi-Fi. Oh, shit. Peyton just got on the uh, Facebook Live. Mr. Wright, good to see you as always, sir. Peyton, how's... Uh, Houston, Texas, or wherever you live. It's, uh... He's in Corpus Christi. Corp- yeah, whatever. <laughs> Shout out to... One of the uh, great on-to-all-time internet trolls, Peyton Wright. Oh, he's destroyed My so many wall chats. watching. Miss Anagnos, the lovely. Hi, Very man. youthful-looking Natalie Anagnos. <laughs> also, somebody said, I feel like Cat will open an organic homemade soap store in Portland. <laughs> that is the most accurate comment. I, I can know. tell you it won't be soap. Oh. What's that? Oh, because I don't use that. <laughs> that the joke don't going? put words in my mouth. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I definitely don't use deodorant. <laughs> I don't have a blog. Yeah, you do. Oh, I do. Yeah, you oh, do. Okay. Yeah, you do. You've got a Tumblr. <laughs> Secret, and nobody will know about it. Even Harry can't find it. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a challenge. Oh, he boy. is the internet. He's <laughs> like the real Al Gore. I take it back. Harry, I never doubted you. <laughs> <laughs> he hacked into Spangle's webcam. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Just like he the went NSA. full NSA. Yeah. All right. Five of those. <laughs> so thank you to everybody who's joining us. Uh, we are just about to begin. We chit chat for the first twenty minutes or so. Uh, we're going to just just to kind of catch up. If you're new to the program, so you understand what this is and what we're doing, we talk for the first <laughs> twenty minutes or so, and then uh, we jump into the topics tonight. We're going to be discussing. What are we? What are we talking about? Trump. The good, the bad, the ugly. A review and assessment of. God Emperor. All right. Yeah. And so uh, get get ready to be prepared uh, for uh, preparation. I don't know what that H? Means. Preparation H? Here we go. Uh, uh, I should have put Tad between Cat and Greg. I'm sensing a fight brewing. Oh, Cat is a lightning rod this week. She's – We're gonna, we'll talk about that as once we Who get started. Who said that? Uh, uh, Christy Avery. She is so correct. Christy, how are you? My favorite. And Christy, you, never forget whose team you're on. Yep. And Team Tad. <laughs> it's true. Facebook, Twitter, if you all would share this stream, that would Much be great. Much appreciated. It would be, uh, that would be great if you could share this so other people will watch. We'd, we'd greatly appreciate that. So Force wall on others. That's the key. <laughs> Force <Exactly>. friendship. Well, <laughs> the way don't violate their nap. Like this friendship ring. I yes. Know Here we go. All right, everybody be quiet. <laughs> Shh. Right. Welcome to We Are Libertarian. <laughs> I'm sorry. She put a... <laughs> What Thumb. happened? I didn't do anything. I don't even know what that is. It's a fu- it's a it's a friendship ring. Sorry. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Here, I'll I'll accept your friendship ring. 
Okay. Second Thank hand you. friendship ring. There. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Somebody's getting the, the. Can you blame me? I got hit in the face with that putty after the show last week. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. Listen, the, uh, the, do you want to read the open? Sure. All right. Okay. Here we go. Am I allowed to? Yeah, of course wow. you can. Moving, moving on. Oh, well, we can only go up from here. Here we go. All right. Everybody, everybody <laughs> be quiet. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Kat Anagnos. We Are Libertarians brings you all the irreverence modern politics deserves. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate us and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 dollars a month helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so and then dive deep into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned, the language is strong and offensive. Boom. All right, well, now you got to transition. If you got to transition. Introduce everybody. Hello, everyone. It is I, Kat and Agnos. Um, with me is dear leader, Chris oh. Bangle. How are you? Kat, how are you doing? You did very well on the, on the introduction. For those listening at home uh, that, and watching us on our Facebook stream, that was my final exam for my internship. Yep. Did I pass? Uh, well, you, in my mind, you passed, but uh, it's not up to me. It's up to Greg. I thought you did an excellent job, yeah. You're very professional. With good. us also is Greg Lenz. Greg, how Catherine, are you? Catherine, how are you? I'm great. Gregory? Good. It's good to see you again. This Thank is wonderful. You. I'm enjoying all this. Great. All right. <laughs> and also with us is... <sighs> Tad Western. That's me. My Hi, Cat. How are you? Spangle? I'm doing well. I'm in the... Lenz? I am in the vicinity of my arch enemy, but other than that... Arch enemy? You just told me you had a crush on me five minutes ago. No, no, no. I said I wanted to go to Red Robin with you. That was a difference. Red Robin? Okay. Is it the unlimited fries? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> bottomless for, fries? Listen, Finding Ring Tower? Of course. Listen, for a Muncie Six, bottomless fries, that, yeah. is, a, that is a date. Key to a girl's heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what it was that um, Muncie descriptor you said? Muncie Six. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. Indianapolis 2, Muncie Six. All right. Oh, Court 4. It's <laughs> like a negative eight in California. I hate inflation. <laughs> So yes, we uh, we thank Kat for reading the introduction, yes, and well uh, she is uh, she she can read. She actually on the on the <laughs> on the, uh, the ball state's doing well. She yeah. can read. Uh, she <laughs> actually you. did a Cersei voice on on uh, the big show on the on the day job, and it was excellent. Like if you go thank to the, you. if you go to the Bob and Tom uh, Facebook page on August second and watch the video of the Game of Thrones with Kermit. And you can hear her doing a surgery. Do, give us a little taste of your British accent. <clears throat> well, which which region? Just, I know like all re, of them. Well, just read kind of the lines of what you said. Oh, Derby. Said like, <clears throat> Silence, you slimy toad. I don't care how old you are. I am Queen Sissy, and where are my dragon? Uh, I guess that's yeah. Daenerys, but still. yeah. So you'll have what, to go. You'll have to go watch that? it. Yeah. It's Game of Thrones. Oh, 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 I thought it was Harry Potter. Greggy. Well, of course I know Harry Potter as well. But back to you, Harry Potter. Cat uh, Cat has become a controversial figure in We Are Libertarians this week. Has she? I haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. She's um, sh her personality blossomed this week, and everything that Chloe warned me about, <laughs> I, I've, I've seen full board this week. It's uh, you've been on a tear this week. Listen, it's my last week at the day job. It's my last full week of We Are Libertarians. Right. So I before going back to full school, week. <laughs> full week. So I, you know, us slave drivers <laughs> in our. <laughs> Three hours once a week, right. or well, you don't—you can just spout your opinions without preparation. Now that I'm not in the basement sweatshop, I, uh, <laughs> those yeah. soccer balls aren't cheap. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to target. Not going to weave themselves. Massimo brand. Polos yes, aren't. she's she's just she's she's come out of her shell, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think Greg nailed it all along. Can you go back in your shell? Can I? Oh no yeah. no oh, no! All right. I'm like a snake eye. Skin my shed, my shed my skin, and then I can never crawl back into it. <laughs> what Sign up for a metaphor class. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I think I think we've all grown to love Cat over the last three months. I'm, I'm thank in, you. I, every everything is positive about you being on the show, and yes. you've you've thank done you. great. You've done great. Well, thank you for letting me on. This has been a blast. The best summer I've Are ever had. 
No, not at all. No, oh. she's just some some. Damn it! It's it's a it's a closing <laughs> note of uh, the the first act, which is the summer. Yes. And uh, she's just re- reminiscing a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's it's been great. I first came here as an intern. I knew Back nothing. Ascent. Right, right. I I didn't know anything about audio broadcasting. And <laughs> right. <laughs> Now I'm here, and I've learned everything, and this week I've really taken as my final exam, so I got to read the intro, you know, I uh, started trying to troll by myself. It's been you great. You did. You definitely yeah. took the training wheels off on the whole we'll, trolling yesterday. Summer of 2017, uh, we'll, we'll get the to incident. That. The, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, at, at work, she's just fully blossomed. It's finally nice to see you blossom. Thank you. Uh, I've been waiting 20 long years. Yeah, so if everybody could write on her Facebook wall, thank no, no. congratulations for blossoming. <laughs> no, 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 that is okay. Oh, uh, our little... Our little caterpillars finally blossomed into a butterfly. <laughs> a butterfly. So here's here's the problem. Okay, she has blossomed and she is a troll, and we'll get to that. <laughs> but the problem is, she still has glass jimmies, Greg. She does. Yeah, she does. And, and that's the thing, and though. Is, no, don't put it all right on my wall. I'm scared. I've never. Talked she's about very that. into brand management. Right. Very into brand management, <sighs> which is not. We don't do that. Well, you know, you don't. Be libertarian. I don't know about, about you brands. guys, but uh, <laughs> protect <laughs> my brand. Yeah, that's really, you're going to talk about my brand. Tad is wearing his own shirt. It's, it's an emoji. Damn right I am. If that's you, my emoji. That too. is probably copyrighted. If you go, no, it's not. I made it. In well, I mean, Tad yes, Western. it is. It is copyrighted by me. If you, <laughs> if you go to the YouTube page, check out the uh, Tad Western T-shirt that he's wearing. But, but it's available for sale. Uh, yeah, pre-orders are now going on tadwestern.com. <laughs> Send all and money premium on. toothpicks. Yeah, I got Tad's terrific toothpicks. Matter of fact, I forgot I left those in my car. Oh, and I'm getting ready to sell my uh, I got my beard out. <laughs> so Tad just took and off I'm, his hat and, and something. I got, got custom beard brushes that I'm getting ready to come out with. So people. he was hiding that brush in his hat. <laughs> Abraham, no, I walk got around the speeches with it. in his top hat. I walk around with it really? all day long. That's you've, why I wear a hat. You've had a brush in your hat for an hour and a half. Yeah, that's... longer than that. I had it when I was a. Uh, Eating dinner early. Where else do you keep a brush? Yeah, I mean, was you never like know when your beard's gonna get all a big ruse. Or like, did you? Can you can you no. show me the other side of that brush? Some people care what about, about grooming. <laughs> that is that is a dog grooming brush. No, it actually isn't. You want to know? Long <laughs> good story here. I went to go get a beard brush, and they were like outrageously expensive. Uh-huh. So what I do? Went I walk around Meyer for a little bit. <laughs> I walk. I did. I actually went to go buy a, a a dog one, but they were too coarse, and I was like, I'm not trying to. I got sensitive skin. Right. And I'm not trying to rip out my facial hair and walk around looking like Scarface or something, you know, or Freddy Krueger. No. I was like, oh, wait a minute. You got to brush baby's hair. So I go to the baby section. It's a baby brush. It's a baby, hair, baby brush. That's, and it came with a comb. That's smart, honestly. And no, guess how really, much it was? That's very much. Three yeah. bucks. Boom. Nice. How much are you reselling them for after you touched them? 25 <laughs> Tad, You can get Tad EmojiCon. I've got custom green ones coming with the EmojiCon. Is the beard hair still in it when you shoot Oh, yeah. Out? Those will be going for about 50 55 I was going to say. The, uh, Those will be auctioned. Yeah. You can find out more on Tad Talk. Look, in, look for it at iTunes or WeAreLibertarians.com. Hugely the, popular. The second most popular show on We Are Libertarians is Tad Talk. Over 1,000 listeners every, in every, America, but every week. 1.2 million in Ankara, Turkey specifically. Exactly. I, I've got to apologize. Actually, to all my fans, because I took a little bit of time Tatics. off, and I know they they weren't getting their Tatterall, <laughs> and they need their they need their weekly doses. And I I don't know how many phone calls I had to like just end because people were like yelling, "Dad, why aren't you doing a podcast? I'm freaking out over here. I'm having withdrawals." And I was like, "Damn, yeah." So I had to build a studio. I built a studio in my house. It looks which, great too. I know, and I'm doing video podcasts now, which I don't really like. I don't know. It just takes a long time. It is. It's a it's lot a of lot. effort. I'm a one man show. And you have Kona, who's very rambunctious. That mother effort. I so have, seriously, wonderful, sweet dog, but very rambunctious. I have oh like I have like six episodes of We Are Libertarians that I have to go edit and segment out, and it's and just, just audio or you just doing the video? The video? Yeah, the, the video. video, man. I don't want to hear it because we had an intern, and now we don't. I know that could have been done by our intern. Um, I could have done real work for the show when I was an intern, but instead I filled up water bottles. Instead, you promoted yourself. Right. Right. Oh, follow me yeah. on. Quite the rapid ascent. Mm-hmm. No, we 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 uh, we enjoy you being here, but Definitely. you are just you're a shit. You're a little <laughs> shit. You're a little sister. Uh, I can sister. You you did what to me yesterday? Uh, Wet Willie? No. No. <laughs> get, get, get away. He was wearing <laughs> headphones. Wearing I almost headphones. got him. Yeah. No, yesterday I you know taking my final exam, reading the intro, uh, doing some other things. So I pulled up my last water bottle today. It was great. <laughs> Um, and, you know, I just 
this is it. This is where I take everything that I've learned from Sensei Spangle and Sensei Greg Lenz. Let's put it to the test. So uh, at the day job, up to relieve himself <laughs> because he drank, you know, so many water bottles that I possibly hydrated. Right. Don't you sense a little bit of? I think she's jealous of your hydration. No, I am. Look uh, at the skin. There's just baby song. There's just it's a privilege. Of sharpness to anything on water bottles. Don't you think so, Greg? That's what she said. We're at the end of the theoretical summer probationary period. Right. right. And so once you remove the threat, people tend to act out. And that's why we need government all the time. <laughs> I guess. The intermittent. <laughs> they need the threat of force at all times to keep people in line. Right, right. So, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a, an, a latent anger at me, I think. And, and it came out in, in a spectacular fashion yesterday. So, as I said, dear leader got up and I had about two minutes, because he's a very fast peer, <laughs> to... Yeah. To finish my <laughs> final exam. So what I did was I got onto his, his desktop computer, and which he leaves unlocked, and I uh, typed, thank God that I was the fastest typer at my high school, 100, 160 she, words per minute or she something. She does Damn. Like really no, something fast. crazy. That's insane. So I typed out a long, sappy post about, after many failed relationships and changed <sighs> jobs, I am... Now coming out as bisexual, I hope you all can support me. Thank you, and, and God see bless. this is a sign to be brave as well, and or something is, along I, that line. Like a hundred, a hundred <laughs> comments and seventy four likes so far. And then I just sat and waited. And, and one it. family member that asked if you were actually bi. Uh, oh, I had ten people message me and ask if, if if it was true. So I posted a photo, and you, you can follow me. This is all public. You can go well played, uh, Catherine. To, to, to oh, we are libertarian. Yeah, we are libertarians dot com, and you can follow my personal page. There and and I just responded with a photo that she had posted. It's it's kind of a cute photo, but it, she looks very much like a. Uh, she just mowed. She <laughs> just mowed the lawn. Right. And uh, I wrote, "Please pray for Cat and Agnos. She was at softball with the gals, fell and hurt her arm. She drove to the hospital and was diagnosed with fibro. On her way home, she wrecked her Subaru. <laughs> Through it all, she still has a positive attitude. She's a true inspiration. Please share and keep the prayer chain going." Only one share, so not enough people are praying. Please get on there and share but that. But there were multiple comments of one like equals one spit, and there were <laughs> about 50 likes. Yeah, and I, then... I put F on there just to pay respect. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ted. I, I appreciate <laughs> You, you kind of look like Corey Hain, or is it Corey Hain, the guy from, like, Corey and Corey? Remember the Coreys back in the 90s? Yes. Boy yeah. Meets World? Yeah. I thought yeah. I looked uh, cute in You did. I don't know. <laughs> now, uh, but she looks pretty good for a dude. Th that that got a lecture from Ma yeah. Agnos. I was gonna say, yes. I, as soon as I saw the way yesterday was developing, I was like, I want no part of this because I know where this is headed and I know what I'm capable of if I get pushed. So I'm just going to tag push out. it to the limit. You my uh, ta my something along the lines of, Grandma saw the fibromyalgia post. She <laughs> wants to know if everything is okay. Maybe yeah. you should tone it down a bit. I think she probably would have been more concerned about the Subaru and the softball team. No. Nah, with with it's all... 2017, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but Very I was I was just I was mostly hurt that she was like, maybe you should dial it back with the podcast. Maybe not come on so much. Maybe less wall. Maybe more GOP. She was so <laughs> excited for you to join. So, so early on, but this is this is this has happened with my mom. My mom hates Greg and the podcast. Aww. Uh, Cyber bullies me, actually. You're, you're, she does, actually. She told me that the Catholic Church was a gang and I'd never be able to escape their threat. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill's mom. Cult. Jeremiah Morrill's mom is beside herself half the time at everything we post. Your, your mom. My parents know like the antics because I fill in my dad of why it's a good strategy for growth. Right. And he gets it from that level, but that doesn't mean they want to experience it. Right. Yeah, and my mom's so. like, I don't like vulgarity. <laughs> no. I miss it. My miss parents a time know I'm a shit lord. We just, I was just <laughs> having this discussion with my mom the other day, and it's like, I, I miss a world. What our president? It's just become such a vulgar world. <laughs> I, there's no innocence anymore. Well, your mom's a social worker, so was yeah she yeah she was a social worker <laughs> my, uh, for pregnant girls in <laughs> urban schools. Michael <laughs> Michael Moon <laughs> wrote on the on the Facebook live stream. Sweet, I'm in a gang. That's basically what it is. It's like our mothers are worried that we've fallen in with the wrong crowd. We are the libertarians your party warned you about. Yes. And you are not riding bikes with those kids. <laughs> and, and Kat and I have had this discussion all summer long. There's going to be... Adjustment. There's, there's going to be... Listen, your whole, we all have gone through it. You're going to go through it. 
your family and friends, some of them are just not going to get all of this. Well, my mom really just recommended making two Facebook accounts. So yeah. I might do that. <laughs> one for the Lord, one for <laughs> right. the uh, shit Lord. Right. <laughs> the shit lording. Yeah, I have one small one for the uh, niece picks because... That's I, not true. You have one so you can play Farmville. <laughs> that, well, that's why I began it. I was playing a military game. Funniest thing I've ever experienced in my need... life when, I, when it came game? up as a suggested friend. I, I, I'll have to look it up and I can tell you. Mm. But uh, World of Clans. Yeah, Clash of Clans, but I, Social I've, Empires. I've just, I, I I have enjoyed Kat's friendship. We've become okay. great friends. Um, I think the world of her, and I'm so glad that we've become close friends over the summer, which is just why I feel so hurt this week that she's been so uh, catty. Uppity. Catty towards me. <sighs> and and I just find it, uh, I, I, I don't know if there's a problem between us. I don't think so, but... No. I, you you just seem like there's you're a little angry at me. I don't know what it is. Mm. She's becoming a libertarian. The passive aggressiveness is uh, amping up. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, a natural development. If I were you, I'd be having her take a hit off those waters she's filling up because she may be, you know, maybe dousing you. Maybe I'm just feeling sensitive because she's been spiking my drink with my doll. Yeah. Yeah. I have been actually. Yeah. No, what Your it nipples is nipples are sweating, bro. <laughs> what it is is you know I'm you're leaking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm you're sweating. leaking. <laughs> my sweaty nipples. Cat, get over there. <laughs> Tyler, get over there, or Ted, get over there and milk them. My em. plan has worked. <laughs> no. Uh, what it is is I'm excited. You ever have really sweaty nipples? Yeah, I have been. No, I'm excited to go back to school, um, and I think I'm just I'm done learning from you people, and I'm ready to uh, join in. <laughs> it, you it, people, it, it is that that not Tad. I've not learned enough from Tad yet. You uh, nailed it because you've just stopped asking any questions this week. That's the change. You're just like I'm just gonna ride this one out. You're you're on your senior semester. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, I'm just not gonna be judged by somebody who pees in a cup. All right. Here we go. Ooh. Should we get into this, Greg? Ooh. Nope. I nope. think we should talk about this. I, I peed multiple cups. Should. I filled up a two-liter one time. Thank you. Here's the thing. Can we talk about this, Cat? Like yes, two we, liters of yes we can talk about it. So, uh, so we're in a we're in a group chat. Let me set it up. Okay. We're we're in a group chat, and uh, <laughs> and as podcast friends are, and and she <laughs> as, as podcast this friends is are mesmerizing. And she goes, uh, she goes, I had to go to the doctor, and then I had to pee in a cup, but I'm an expert at that. And Greg and I are, like, confused and go, what do you mean by that? She goes, oh, I pee in a cup every night in my dorm room. I actually wasn't, like, because I get, that's the thing, I get this, I don't think it's that outside the norm. I don't either. I, I've never been more, I was. You were mortified. I was genuinely disgusted. Uh, genuinely here disgusted. Here we go You let again. two cats urinate in your bathroom in a litter box, and this grossed you out way more. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? I keep a spit platoon next to my bed, so I can. Chaw spit and just kind of roll over and pee in it in the it, middle of the night. Explain what you do, Kat. Well, here's the thing. My freshman year, you know, my bedroom, my dorm was on one side and the bathroom. The communal bathroom, I may add, was on the way other mm, side. Oh, yeah. Keep so, going. So, you know, in the middle of the night, wake up, have to pee. And I didn't want to wake up my roommate, you know, and the door's loud. When Consider you it. it. And the lights are bright in the hallway, you know, fluorescence and stuff. So, so I get out and... I I'd, I'd peed a little, and there's a wet spot. No, I so, want to have to so, have a so conversation you know, about it. I, I don't want to, you know, have to walk all the way down there, and then I, I don't sleep with a shirt on, so I'd have to put a whole shirt on. <laughs> Very you, stressful. You, you mean you sleep topless? Yeah, so it's a lot of work, you know. So what I would do is I just wake up in the middle of the night, just pee in a cup, put the cup under my desk, go to go back to sleep, and the next morning I dump it out in the bathroom. The only thing that bugs me is that you left it unsealed. Here's the thing. I would think that it would smell, but it didn't. That's what everyone thinks. <laughs> right. No, it really didn't. Do you have any homeless people? I have no idea that the they smell bad. <laughs> All right. The best part of this story is she wasn't doing it because it was too hard. She didn't want to inconvenience her roommate. That's the thing. Is this is good. And it's I'm a not nice lying. thing. But she's, no, those doors. She sort of got anyone no, that's lived in a dorm no, life. It's, it's like a hundred pound door. It hits and it wakes up everyone down the. That's corridor. the most beta move I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'm just trying to be content. You should have woke up and pissed on everybody in the hall and then knocked on each door. Cat, and just threw the pee all over. I'm them. going pee, everyone. This Cat, is my Cat, dorm. Cat is a very considerate person. Mm-hmm. I, I <laughs> other than when she wipes things on Greg. Oh, Greggy. <laughs> I just hugged Greg. Boogies. He's so warm. The nickname Greggy makes me laugh every time she says it. Oh, my mom called me that, and then Grego, but then one time having a party in my basement in high school, she yelled, Grego, we're homo, to about 40 of my best (laughs) friends. And my my kid my buddies will still to this day when they see her say Marla we're homo. Oh, no. Grego we're I, homo. Like the idea that you would you would h- how often have you done this? Like once or twice? No, I would do it every <laughs> single night my freshman year, and then sophomore year before I moved in with my current one of my current roommates. <laughs> shout out to you, Katie. 
I uh, told her before, I said, hey, listen, before we sign our <laughs> lease or whatever together. Don't count on getting the security deposit. I have, need new carpeting. <laughs> I have this problem where in the middle of the night. Problem. I, I don't want to wake people up, so I just pee in a cup. And she's like, yeah, I don't care. Dead. It, it really, like, I've seen women pee so many different places, like, it doesn't shock me at all. Well, the thing is, but, G- Greg, on a, on a boat in the middle of Lake Monroe, where there's... On a boat and, like, right. at, a, at a St. Patrick's Day party under a tent downtown on Georgia oh, Street. Oh, I've seen like, people piss, like... Maybe... In, I saw a girl garage. hike it up and go in a urinal with maybe. one right leg in the oh, air. Oh, yeah, I peed in no. the urinal. May- you have? Yeah, sixth grade. We're in the boys' locker room for Did something. Did they make you go based on what was on your ID? <laughs> 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 they said, no. Oh, they heard Wish we had that all then. They, <laughs> they heard your voice and saw the flannel and were like, come on in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Locker room talk. Guys, we got a bass in show choir. <laughs> 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 you know what they do in show choir, right? Oh, <clears throat> a five, six, seven, eight. A bop, bop, dee, 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 da, bop, boop, ba, da, pee, da, da, da. Sorry. Anyways, Ted, Ted, what's your thoughts on Scat Cat? Well, when I first heard about Scat <laughs> Cat, it was from a meme, and I wasn't sure if it was like the Ella Fitzgerald type of scat or the Danny Thomas scat. I didn't know. I didn't know which type it was. <laughs> D- L- Danny Thomas was a comedian in the fifties who liked uh, scat play. Yeah, uh, so I didn't. I didn't know, and you it's loved honestly them. both. <laughs> and so I was thinking about getting you a litter box. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. <laughs> once we heard about peeing in the bottle and keeping it unsealed. Right, right, right. Sorry. Well, well, honestly, yeah. Like basically, I wouldn't be surprised if she just shit in the middle of the floor because she pees in the middle of a room. Well, a milk jug. It's got a cap. Right. Exactly. So I'm not an animal. I mean, you are peeing every single night. I mean, my name is Cat. You put any litter in it. No. So, anyways, let me finish my story. So, what do you? Where do you get the cups? We have what, disposable cups. Polar pop cups, right? From red Solo. Um, I do not know what those are. But you don't know what a polar red, pop is? No, like no, no, the no. big styrofoam a red solo cup. cup. Um, yeah. Don't know what that is. Anyways, so what? <laughs> that's a Ball State education. They drink everything out of the mason jars. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's relevant. Joke. That's actually so true. My kitchen is full of bottle jars. But, anyways, so yeah, so I just peanut cup. My roommate didn't think it's weird, and then uh, I don't know. <laughs> It just, you know, I like to be considerate. Like, how much did you spend on cups? Well, we just always had cups. Dude, for beer pong in college, that's like a factored in part of the budget. I am not 21. That Flippy is cup. Not... You have roommates at Arnold, don't you? Well, yeah, one. Katie, now. now. Happy, yeah. happy 21st. Oh, I'm Katie. sorry. Drinking happens on. Okay, so so we get to. I thought this was a libertarian podcast. She, right. now, lives a, she now lives in a beautiful house. Yeah, five bedroom, two bath. Beautiful. Two bath. Still peas in a cup? You are literally around the corner from the bathroom. <laughs> And what did you tell us? Okay, here's the other thing. <laughs> Every bedroom in our beautiful new house has its own like sink and vanity. Mm-hmm. It's very convenient. So here's the thing. Every bedroom also has a deadbolt lock. And we're in, you know, Muncie, Indiana. On ca- Necessary. Like, on campus. Terrified. So, you know, I go to bed. Everyone sleeps with our <laughs> doors deadbolt <laughs> lock. And so, you know, I just wake up. And when I have to pee, I just pee in my sink. How high is it? Not that high. I'm just about this high of this table. Like, I'm a, I'm not a, all I'm a the time, pisser. but I'm afraid of, you know, going out, like, unlocking my door, going out into the hallway and getting kidnapped. Do you... Well, you have Italian roommates. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know the Italians. Right. You, I mean... Hey, no. I, I, not to be indelicate, but I've always <laughs> been taught that girls have to wipe. Oh, yeah, I do. What, this what is is two. Sock, two sock, sock, you know, whatever, whatever. Comforter. Yeah. What's like my uh, what, whatever's close. It's my roommate's t-shirt. <laughs> you seem to not have any problem wiping your hands on other people's clothing and using it as a what towel. What you talking about, yeah. Greggy? I'm gonna <laughs> delay. You actually, you actually brought something for her, did you not? I don't have it with me. I had it with me the last time, but Uh-oh. we didn't get to do this segment. But I uh, I finished a lemon lime Gatorade bottle, thirty two <laughs> ounce, and was going to gift it to you. You should have. Very thought. I'll give it to you. I got to sign I it now. I, I mean, it's how- got the cap too, and I'd like you to, you know, was it a wide mouth? Get weird. See I'm if saying. the cap, you know, if you want to keep it capped. Oh, I've used caps before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's I have. Way. I have a very powerful stream. I don't know about you fellas. How does this not splash everywhere, cat? It does. It's just piss. Practice makes perfect is how you get to Carnegie Hall. Exactly. It does. It's just piss. No, practice this makes is, perfect. I can, okay, I'm not even kidding, disgusting. and I will do this sometime for you guys. Well, maybe not. But <laughs> All right. I, can, I can. Get up on the table. No, 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 no. I can pee. Two in walls, a, one cup. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is where we go to pay. <laughs> I can pee in a water bottle. I'm not even kidding. That's a really impressive. No, like no a drinks. small 20 ounce? Yeah. Aquafina like or Dasani? No, like an ice mountain. Wow. I, I swear to God, I can. The 12, like the small 12 ounce? Yeah. So, Okay, wait, this one? No, 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 like, like the, the, the regular one.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. Swear to God, I can. That's literally like because I was actually like totally freaking out. Like, oh my God, if she does this laying down. No, I this don't is like do it physics, like impo- She's somehow got to know around the laws of physics she, to do this. She's still splashing pee all over her no. legs. No, bro. Your thighs no. are all wet. T- can you back me up here? Listen. He thinks that it's like a mess. It's, it's really it's not. It's disgusting. It isn't. This is just so disgusting. The comp- number one, your, your, R. Kelly is so hard right now. Number two, <laughs> number two, everything I, every, everything I know about women pissing is from that video. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I don't know. It's pretty good. Straight. You've never peed in a bottle. I've never peed in a bottle in my life. Even on like a youth group trip never, in church. Oh never. my god, we peed in like You've never... Dr. Pre- Dr. Pepper bottles like all the time because no. people wouldn't stop. I live in the. I, it is 2017. It, it is, is the, is the current, current year. year. And we have bathrooms and sanitation. But on like your church trips to like West Virginia to like Whitewater Raft, yeah. like it's... no, we stopped. I held it until we stopped. Oh, like, that's like a, mm. like an adult. No, you but... pee in the bottle, and then you throw like, it at homeless people. Exactly, like a civilized human <laughs> being. Here's the thing, though. I re- and I'm not just saying this. I really kind of have stopped for the past two weeks. Well, yeah, you've been shamed. Okay. Yeah, been, it's it's really hurtful. It's kind of like how you know gay people stop being gay when they're shamed. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened. So, uh, we shame. That's Seth not all what the Mike time. Pence told me. No, yeah. we're enablers of Seth. <laughs> I I listen. I want to hear from the listeners. Uh, I want you to write us at editor at weirdlibertarians dot com. I watched a girl poop in an alley before a wedding <laughs> in a white dress because she was having what I didn't know were menstrual cycle poops. Uh, oh. So I had never heard of this phenomenon. She, we're doing pictures. She goes into an alley. Oh, shit. Has to, hits her. Does it. It's her sister's white dress and gives it back to her sister without dry cleaning it. Oh. Sat through the ceremony. Hell mm. yeah. Has, the, ha, Kat, has there ever been a time, and you better answer, answer this honestly, has there ever been a time where it went horribly wrong? Oh, yeah, when it first started going off. Like when I first started doing it, like four years ago or whatever. Well, Were you just like, I got a No one's a natural at peeing in a cup. Yeah, like it's, oh no, peeing in a cup has never gone wrong. Oh, what's Peeing it? in a bottle has gone wrong. Oh, in a bottle. Because it's like this big. And so what did it's, you do? And it's environment just... specific. If it's, there's, you know, you're in a car and it's. Put it down, wiped up the floor, and went back to bed. Here's the real thing. Did you have carpet? No, it's tile. All oh, the dorm well. floors are like tile. Or oh, yeah, linoleum. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They, they, in like they, industrial they, cleanse. Hold on, Oh, yeah. I'm less disgusted knowing it's linoleum because you can bleach it. In dorm mattresses are all like vinyl covered. Yeah, okay. it's not that gross. Now, Here's the thing: the I know comforter. it's gross and it's not ideal. And yeah, maybe it's not it's ladylike, not but thing you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I would rather not have my entire floor and my roommate hate me for yeah. waking them up at. Oh, that's a real thing. Because girls are especially more sure. worse than guys. <laughs> girl, <laughs> girl, it's the girls' room. It's so. it's so great. I mean, I listen. I know I have to go to the bathroom, but girl, you know I love you. Oh, like the dorm I lived in, it was a U, and so the girls were over on the right side, the guys were on the left side. But there was a bunch of sing. I got lucky, and it was a bunch of single play- individual units, and then a dual one for me. And then the girls were set up the same way. Girls that didn't get a bid to any of them, and then lived in the dorms Ooh. as a sophomore alone. Oh. On the right side, if you made any noise, they were the bitchiest. Oh, yeah. One, no one accepted them to any of this. Right, release. because they were yeah. social freaks. Yeah, they didn't even get into the, you know, DGs. Nothing goes down faster than an anchor. <laughs> oh, no. And so, like, you know, they didn't. And so they, it, you would pee in a bottle. You peed in a water bottle. Oh, yeah. Or a Gatorade I, bottle, usually. Yeah, yeah. It's Gatorade, whatever. So, I, here's the thing. I, 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 being around Cat, I really have never been exposed to the traditional college experience. But, like, talking with Kat, it's such a huge part of her life. Mm -hmm. And as we've gotten to know each other, she tells me all so much about college life. Like, I realize kind of what I've missed out on. Like, my college experience was at IUPUI, which is a commuter campus. Was. It was a commuter (laughs) campus. But I – and so I lived in my mom's basement, drove to IUPUI, went to work, came home. You know, we had one dorm, and I hung out there for half a semester – I, I would go to other places where there were dorms, but like I was there for a couple hours. I, I didn't live. And if there wasn't with parking, people. you went right the fuck home. And I <laughs> went back, and I had the entire basement to myself. And I'm a very like my space is a sacred space. I don't want people touching. Yeah, it. all that goes out the window. All that and, and oh, I, personal I never, space is gone. I never realized like how much when you're in college and you live in a dorm or you're in a frat or whatever or a sorority. Oh. Like, how little personal time and personal space you actually have. Oh, yeah. That's why they're all triggered all the time. Oh, well, you yeah. went to they're USI, and, like, at USI, they had apartments your freshman year, right? No dorms? Well, technically, I'm still a freshman at USI, but I lived <laughs> in the uh, apartment. I lived in the apartments with uh, an RA, so I only had one uh, roommate. So I just got blasted the entire time and peed wherever I wanted to. I gotcha. 
Yeah, so I I just I have I still have a very strong sense of personal space and cleanliness and like yeah. the amount of nudity that is just normal for college guys and girls like it it's really odd to me like it's it's a totally foreign concept with like, Al- like since, since you didn't have that traditional experience like your methodism is very extreme on certain method right. things Absolutely. like whereas it just is like oh nudity is normal or like it's whatever and you just get used to like you know your roommate standing over you and breathing heavily at night right. like cats did well and the- <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and that and that's the thing is, I used to be a very like private, I need my own space kind of person. And I have then, a meeting, right? I have a meeting. And then when I went to school, all of that goes out the window. It like, does. My and it's painful adjustment period at first. Oh yeah. And my roommates, like, I would get back to my dorm or whatever, and one of the my friends who didn't live in my dorm would just be like laying in my bed. And I'd be oh. Like, Jordan, what are you doing? Oh. What are you doing, buddy? She's like, I was bored. I'm like, eh, get out of my great. bed. Guess what's on that comforter? Yeah. And, and, and my the- pee. <laughs> that isn't mellow yellow in that cup, hon. And the lack of alone time that you have. That, you you have to why, go to the library. That is why I'm so recharged from hanging out today after the day job. Spangle took a four-hour nap, and I played Mario Kart all by myself. And then when Greg and Tad got here, they were like, what are you on? Oh, you're a different like, person. Hey, everybody. Stunning. How's it going? Yeah. How's everybody doing? You gotta now have I feel like... Wow, what you've endured this I, summer. I'm an e- yeah. <laughs> I'm an ENFJ. She's an ENFP. So are you. Yep. Tad is uh, an INTJ uh, master race. Oh. Uh, no, you're not. Are you really an INTJ? We usually hate INTJs. That explains so much, Kat. Uh, so, so Kat and I are highly social, but at the same time, man... I need my downtime to recharge. The, I read a book called The Highly Sensitive Person by Elaine Aaron. I can't recommend it enough. And it oh, just yeah. it explains, like, how much downtime this is what you needed. It. It's, it's so crucial to, like, a, a successful life is just having, like. Solitude. Like, it, there was, it, I think it was Monday, maybe, that Kat was very edgy. And I go, hey, are you okay? You seem a little edgy. And she goes, I, I got a lot of sleep last night. I was like, rest isn't sleep. And, like, that's a concept that I've kind of learned over the last year. Oh, it's about quality. Yeah, where you just need that time just to play Mario Kart and get weird. Clear your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so good times. We we love having Kat, uh, even though she pees in cups. Um, And so it is. Which isn't that, it isn't really that weird. I. As much as I'd love to shame you for it, I really can't. At least she's house broke. (laughs) Right. No, she isn't. She She quit last two weeks. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, I've pretty much. She's gotten better. Yeah, I've actually really done it. Much done. I'm proud of you. Thank Look you. at how we've helped personal growth. Thank you. I think changing lives. Because we're the three best friends. We're the three best friends. The we're the three best friends with Tad. Hey. Now, right. <laughs> Tad, you want to want to trade? You've I grown, trade. You've grown a lot. How has how has Come the We Are Libertarians community changed you over the last three months? Well, I'm going to go back to school and probably lose all of my friends because of how offensive <laughs> I have become. <laughs> You, so, you're yeah. more offensive than Greg and I, honestly. We're not going to get into She's that. She's in the enthusiastic first early shitlord like, era. That's exactly right, yeah. yeah. like w- w- You remember the old days of brutalism, Tad, when we were really cranking out the memes remember, two Tad? years ago? Remember Craigslist, Tad? <laughs> remember no, you remember know. The Lauren Spear? Remember Who? Flashlights? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The good old days? Like... Well, here's the thing. I when still do these things, but I don't send them to you guys anymore. She and, I, <gasps> she and I were sitting next to each other, trolling each other, cackling and howling oh, yeah. a, a, all day long. And then, like, we we made a meme of Greg, which <laughs> was really funny, by the way. It was, was really funny. Which is in the, in the We Are Libertarians Facebook group, which you can join if you go to We Are Libertarians. I made a contribution. Uh, you did, <laughs> but we couldn't <laughs> post it. I don't know why. We showed it to a couple people at work today, and they go, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> and this is these are people who are the most offensive people on the planet. Yeah, uh, that's funny. So yeah, comedy doesn't win anymore. And <laughs> I want to make it win again. So yeah. so yeah, we're I, I'm just looking forward to the day, probably within the next six months to a year, when Cat doesn't have glass jimmies. She there's still there's still you know you still even though you're enjoying being a shitlord, you you still have like, oh no, I can't do that. I might. This might happen to me, or that might happen to me, and then you're you're just not fully free yet. And I can't wait till you're fully free because you. And are- you may not be if you go the media route for sure. Like all hands on bo- on deck, you never are. You can't. No, you can't she's, dally in what we dally. She's in. she's right. she's, des- no. she's destined for this. You can, but you just can't have social media. I am no. Very true. She, she and that's she, half the fun is watching the outrage. <laughs> yeah. well, that's the only reason you do it. I yeah. know. I know her better than you guys. I'm telling you, she won't be able to. 
stand herself if she were just quiet. <laughs> like, you know what I What's mean? What's that supposed to mean? I mean, it means that if you don't have total freedom at some point to say whatever you want to say, you'll go crazy. That's why I'm starting my own podcast. Really? Uh-oh. We are cat libertarians. No. I'm <laughs> That's a great name. We are catatarians. Wow. Catatarians. Me and my oh. DBA are going to sue you. Oh. Big, uh, big podcast update before we jump into the topics uh, for this week. Oh, I, uh, yes. I met with, uh, 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 I met with a legal person. I met with Tad. My, I met with my account my lawyer. As your attorney, I advise you not to go any further. With Tad Western, <laughs> JD, Esquire. I met with the accountant, got a bunch of things. The amount of thing I, I didn't know about tax write-offs, Greg. Yeah, you had been. I thought you'd been like. I had been under the impression that even though you hadn't formalized things, you were still, as a sole proprietorship, writing off no. the majority of the expenses. No, I just filed my regular w- W-2, and I've been paying the tax. So 1040 easy? So we're going back and refiling those taxes. Oh, you should have. The well, amount of things that I can write off thanks to this podcast. You can now. write off your marriage. Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, uh, two ways. Uh, Never collecting uh, on that. Yeah. You weren't the only one. That we were. Uh <laughs> Oh, you made <laughs> made a putty a rose for Greg. Oh, I thought it was a dreidel. Cat. Oh. A dreidel. <laughs> um, nice and you. So yeah, with the all the equipment that I've bought, all the expenses, we're we're gonna write all that off. I signed up with the uh, with the IRS and the state of Indiana. We are libertarians as an official entity. We're a real business now. We're going to. Uh, I've met with a couple uh, professional marketers and uh, and accountants and tax people. So we're gonna start doing some uh, big things and. Got uh, somebody who's going to help me fund some of that, and obviously you guys are going to help me fund by uh, joining PayPal or Patreon, uh, and by becoming a a member, which you will be able to do very soon. Um, so look for we're we're now going to have the ability to do a lot more on a daily basis. We're not going to do a daily podcast because that's uh, no way. way too no much. Possible way. And no one likes us that much. Right. But, uh, we're an acquired taste and we have a short shelf life. So. Speak for yourself. Greg. If you would, <laughs> if you would go to the website, sign up for the email, a uh, newsletter list, the dispatch that is up on, on there. And, uh, yeah, if you want to help as I'm kind of building some things out right now and installing software and buying software, it, it's, taking a big chunk of money right now out of my personal pocket. So if uh, you would go to PayPal at wearelibertarians.com and make a contribution, uh, 10 bucks, 5 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever you can afford right now, like th- in the next week or two, that'll really help me get some uh, software that I need to buy to help Several get the, Bitcoin. The, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the membership stuff uh, ready to go. So, so yeah, if you, if you love We Are Libertarians, if you would miss us if we were gone, if uh, you would be willing to support us. We'd greatly appreciate that. I, I do need the help financially to kind of get some things done. You guys have been so gracious in helping us get the equipment that we've needed over the last two years. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we've gotten so many compliments on the studio that you can watch at YouTube and uh, on the live stream. And uh, especially Christy, Avery, and Jason Doolittle ha- Our angels. have helped. And, and Phyllis Klosinski have helped us yes. tremendously. Uh, but uh, a lot of you just sending in a microphone or sending in an SD card or sending in just watching and support. You know, it's always yeah. you know humbling Sharing. to think that our Sharing, time is you know that we're even worth listening to. To just, be honest, and like if you're if you're watching on the camera, I'll kind of point point it out. But like this is a three hundred and fifty dollar recorder. This is a twenty five dollar cord. This is a thirty dollar cord. This is a hundred and fifty dollar microphone. This is a thirty dollar stand. That's a hundred dollar microphone. This it's a seventy five dollar a week intern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, the, it's an the expensive guest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and you, you times that all out by eight because you've got to have backups and you've, you've we've got a mobile rig. It's just a lot of equipment, a lot of cost that goes into making we are libertarians. That that uh, you know we don't we we don't uh, I carry a lot of that on my shoulders and uh, I, I'm I'm glad that I can do tax write offs. But everybody who donates, we thank you so much because you've made all this possible Mm -hmm. and getting us to this point. So please sign up for the email newsletter at the website. And also, if you would, be willing to make a cash contribution through PayPal or Patreon, a one-time or a monthly contribution at wearelibertarians.com. That would be awesome. And we thank you so much because we're about to start doing more. And that is the goal is to continue to grow this and do more and more and more uh, because you guys have shown over the last two or three years how much you like We Are Libertarians. You're getting content here and information that you're not getting from the mainstream media. 
And so we've proven the concept that this can be a viable business. And so I'm taking the ball and I'm running with it. And uh, I, I am only doing that because you guys have supported us and you reach out, you send us emails, you message us, you say nice things, you send in uh, equipment through our Amazon wish list at We Are Libertarians. So you guys are just awesome, and I thank you so much for helping us. Uh, now, are you still realize. accepting nudes as payment too? <laughs> I, I am. I take nudes. Uh, I get. I get. Uh, you know, about once a week, I get a nude, but I really could use more nudes, and I don't. Not from you, Colin Schaefer. <laughs> Colin Schaefer keeps trying to Christy gay- Avery, we're looking at you. <laughs> Colin Schaefer keeps trying to gay marry me on Facebook. And so I it's Hey, it's not gay marry anymore. It's just marry. And yeah, so, come on. And so I uh I uh married his wife on Facebook today. So. The great cuckening of our time. <laughs> wow. The so, ecuckening.com. So speaking of emails, <laughs> we're going to hop into uh Dear Leader is a segment that we have here on the podcast where Dear Reader. So where you write us letters at editor at we are and uh we read your emails. Uh listen, it doesn't have to be politics. This is a political question. It can be life advice. Obviously, uh we're very successful, very handsome. We are uh pretty. pretty. Uh we are funny. We just have a lot of good things going on in our life. Um, you know, some of us are so successful that we created a fake name on a drunken night a year and a half ago and convinced all of their friends to just go with it. <laughs> Greg? <laughs> Gregory Lenz, yeah, the Timothy. other account. I would have went with something else, more creative. That's but, true. So It uh, works. Uh, yes, and somebody on the, on the uh, Facebook asked if we're going to do T-shirts, and that is in the works. I'm looking for a graphic designer, so if you're a graphic designer that uh, really wants to work with me and, and make awesome, awesome T-shirts, that would be great. Uh, hit me up. Uh, so Dear Leader, is uh, it can be life advice if you have – personal advice that you need help with dating uh, dating <laughs> um, i know a lot of the guys out there are struggling a lot of the girls out there are struggling to get dates if you are single between the ages of 19 to 23 and are interested in a libertarian bell like me please i, did, I didn't i never my parents are so worried <laughs> I, yeah, I never knew your age range uh, 19 to 23 I just threw that out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's your... Is that your... for 14-year-old. Oh, gross. Stop it now. Women. Behave. <laughs> Women or men? Men. Okay. Preferably. Well, there's a little equivocation oh, there. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, actually, just men. But so, I'm all for new always... friends. So. She loves new friends. She's like a golden retriever. Uh, all right. So, dear, dear leader, this is from our friend Matt. Dear leader, I love the show, which is oh. the best way to start any email. I live in Cobb County, Georgia, but dangerously close to where Bittner's from. <laughs> oh. I live in Cobb County, Georgia. I just got a call from a young Republican running for a state Senate seat next year. I despise the good old boy network that puts these candidates forward. And for some reason, they always seem to have the same script running harder to the right than the previous candidate. The sad thing is he will probably win. But in this instance, he is 28 and wants to win young voters who are turning Democratic. I think there is an opportunity for libertarian ideas to win the day. So my question for you and perhaps your show, if I only get a few minutes to challenge such a candidate, whether in private or at a public forum, what are the best questions to ask to see if they are open to libertarian ideas or even to persuade them to be libertarian? Are there any resources that you can point me towards? Thanks, Matt. Uh, Greg, what do you think? You got to start. I mean, you're the one that's had the most experience doing this. Mine's very contrarian. You, you, you. <laughs> is he an individual that is try- that is going to consider running as well, or is he simply trying to lead someone down the path to libertarianism I know from what, the GOP? I know what you know, but it sounds like he wants to convince his legislator to be more libertarian. First, well, one you'll never convince or tell anyone anything, especially when it comes to political philosophy. Like no one ever wants to be sold; they just want to buy. And so the only real way to ever change anyone's opinion is to help them flush out what they believe and what they think. And so rather than telling them what you believe or what's the accepted orthodoxy of libertarianism or when libertarianism is applied, you need to ask him questions in a way that challenge some of his core assumptions he hasn't worked out. Because that's actually that's how Abdul challenged your beliefs and how you became yep. a libertarian. 
I was a ditto head, and I just said whatever, Ru- whatever Rush said, and uh, I was like, the oh, gospel. I don't believe any of this. Right. You know, like, no one ever thinks it through. It's bumper, stick and, uh, bumper sticker orthodoxy, really. And so you just need to ask him, um, get him in a one-on-one scenario or get him in somewhere where he's away from judgment in a setting where he's not wearing the pol- politician hat. And ask him what he believes on some foundational issues about the application of force. And, and have it as a theoretical. Don't make it, you know, separate the two. Set it up. Listen, I admit there are practical issues with believing things a certain way. Like, for instance, this isn't achievable right now. But what do you, in theory, how do you believe? And then sort of plant those seeds of doubt and walk him through the flushing out process of what he actually believes. And I think if you do it in that manner and you get the opportunity to do it, um, outside the uh, outside judgment being forced on him in a real honest way, you will see that he will arrive at libertarianism almost e- virtually everyone will by default yeah. right. because at the end of the day, virtually no one is a, supports the use of force unless it's for communists and they're not moral agents. So it's not people. You can throw them out of helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I would say that, um, Here's here's a contrarian view. Uh, trying to convince someone who is running for office while they are running for office of anything is absolutely impossible. Right. Because the nature of running for office is that you have already picked the issues that you are going to run on. You are going to drive those messages as hard as you possibly can. You are going to stick to your script, and you are not going to deviate because the second you deviate on one phone call – because when you're in a campaign, you are so paranoid. Uh, even in a libertarian campaign, you are so paranoid about everyone and everything that everyone is out to get you that you're <laughs> – Didn't Trump one. You, don't, you, you, call, <laughs> you call a random person, and yeah, speaking of paranoid, yeah. you, uh, you, you, are, you, are, you don't know who you're speaking to. You could be who's speaking – Who's recording. Uh, you, who's recording the phone call. So you're never really going to step outside of your comfort zone – even in a one-on-one setting, if you go and meet with them, maybe you know the the way to try and shape people's beliefs is by joining a party and getting involved. If if you want to know the truth, I think uh, association. If if you're if you're interested in becoming a Republican, going to the Young Republicans, uh, Young Democrats, joining the Libertarian Party, whatever party you closely identify, get involved in that political party and. You know, go to the social events that are the year and a half before those elections take place. And that is the place to really debate and try to change minds. Because if you are doing anything other than that, if you are trying to do it during a cycle, you're just not – they're not listening to you. Because it's, 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 it's a neurological thing too because in a campaign, you are so focused on go, 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 go that the brain is stuck in that active thinking. And the way that you really can change someone's mind is when they're, in, when they're more relaxed, when they're, it's a more passive setting, it's more, their mind is allowed to wonder. It's, it is neurologically impossible for you to think creatively and think outside of the box when you are doing tasks, for instance. It's why when you're in the shower or you're driving to work or you're just doing something that is kind of, you know, like you're mowing the lawn, it's just you're taking a walk, and that's when your brain comes up with the most creative ideas that you have. That's because your brain is allowed – it's out of that gear and into a different place and can kind of think of things. And I don't think – and that's one of the reasons that I decided to start the podcast five years ago. I was spending so much time doing, uh, doing training. Training, uh, tr- uh, yeah. I mean, I was working with the Libertarian Party of Indiana as their executive director for four years, and I spent a lot of time training candidates. But we didn't win a lot of converts. I think that the time I went on Chick McGee's podcast, I converted more people to libertarianism than uh, when I uh, w- w- than I did in four years. The as bad the Christian executive. podcast, without the, doubt. The bad Christian podcast yeah. with with Matt Carter. Or it wasn't the bad Christian. It was break it down. Uh, both of those are great podcasts, by the way. Please uh, support your local podcasts where they are served. And I think those instances and, and people's minds are changed by we are libertarians and these libertarian podcasts because they're mowing the lawn, they're doing the dishes. I listen to podcasts as I'm cleaning or I'm walking to the pool or I'm driving. 
Yeah, and so my brain is allowed to kind of soak in some of that information in a in a less uh, engaged way. So I don't think that you can change a politician's mind. Uh, and I think and once, you shouldn't try. Once they get elected, it is it is even more difficult because they have a vested interest in maintaining the things that they said and did when they were elected, uh, and maintaining uh, party strategy and party I- ideology. And so, really, you've got to get these young Republicans, you've got to get these young Democrats long before they ever decide to run for office, uh, because that's when you can really kind of convince them that now. You can kind of you when there's issues, uh, you can you can kind of neutralize them a little. So there's a congressman now, Jim Banks, uh, Mm -hmm. up in the third district of Indiana. He is a fantastic human being. He is a great guy. He was a state senator here in Indiana. He had just been elected and he wanted to meet with the Libertarian Party of Indiana, came, sat, had a conversation with us about what we were concerned about, because, you know, he knew that we were an influential force in Indiana politics. He was. He followed a few of us on Facebook, and he just – he reached out and initiated the meeting and sat and listened to all of what we had to say about five or six people. And gay marriage was really where we had the biggest debate. And we were able in that conversation to take him from a place of staunchly uh, Christian, you know, Christian conservative thinking to more of a libertarian thinking on gay marriage, which is – why is the government involved in the first place? As Christians, I don't want the government's – I, it, I have a friend. He got married on Sunday, and they filed the paperwork and got the marriage license on Monday. And so he asked, what day is my anniversary? Is it when I swore before God that I would love this woman, or was it when I swore before the state? And the answer is before God. And so as Christians, we don't want to give the state powers that God – reserves for himself and and he was very receptive to that message and uh it's because he was relaxed and able to listen and you know i I don't know where he's at as a congressman now on it but i think the gop as a whole is kind of realizing that's a dead issue and that it is something that they just don't need to uh discuss so uh we've been very successful in indiana with people like todd rakita congressman todd rakita uh, who is a friend of mine, who is a, a really good guy too, Jim Banks. Over the years, as they have start, uh, uh, I've been involved in local politics for 15 years, and I've had personal relationships with these people who were smaller tier politicians who then went on to now serve in the U.S. Congress. Rakita's running for Senate in Indiana. Uh, we've been able to influence them in a more libertarian direction as their career has progressed on certain issues. So it is, it is just about finding common ground with these people, uh, but you're never going to get time with a congressman and sit down and get them to change their views. The stakes are just too high. The fundraising goals are too high, and it's just uh, the, the structure, the incentives are, are perverse, and so that's an unfortunate thing, but uh, it, it, it really helps when you get involved at a local – I mean – I persuaded these people who are now congressmen when well, all I was working for the Libertarian Party. I wasn't in their party, but uh, I, I built relationships with them because I had been in the Republican Party first. Um, so find relationships with these politicians early on. The earlier you can get to them, the better, and uh, convince them as they go on. Anybody else have anything that they want to yeah, add to I, it? I was going to mention finding common ground. You, you, he talked about how he wanted to push farther right. And I did a little research after you sent me the question, but from all the trending top or from all the trending data that I saw, the Cobb County was actually trending more Democrat. It was actually the first time since 1980 that uh, in 2016 the Democrats actually uh, <laughs> voted for the president. It was all Republican up to then. So to me, that seems he's going the wrong way if he's wanting to actually get elected. And as far as trying to push for more libertarian, I think you gotta get you gotta take what you can get from the Republicans and take what you get from the Liber- or from the Democrats. I mean, you gotta work on social issues with the Democrats and take the you know your drug, marijuana, whatever civil, it, civil your issues. your your civil issues, and then your more tax and then economic, I, I, economic and... from the Republicans, and you just gotta figure that out and right. preach those because no one's ever gonna change. You're not going to get a Republican congressman to come out and say, "Yeah, I'm pro-choice." I mean, it's not going to happen. So no. you've just got Lincoln or a log well, I mean, Republican. it may, but <laughs> it, 
it's going to kill him in the. I mean, nobody, oh, yeah, it's, you it's, know, it's everybody, everybody who goes through. I'm a Republican. This is what I believe. Okay, that's why I'm. You know, it's it, it is how it is, and you gotta you gotta try to. I don't know. Uh, grease up, and... grease up the gears that uh, that you want that you want to get, and it's not just going to be from one congressman. That's not going to do shit. No. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta. You got to get more than that. You got to build a coalition. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and if you can find that, uh, Into the, the big things, the big things, creating like the trade off. So if absolutely. you can get a package deal where it benefits, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I adjusted his mic. <laughs> she for just him. thank you, Cass. She just, wiped, she she just mic shamed me. Uh, it's four yeah. years. No, I saw it. It was like a centimeter that I just know. needed to go. Four <laughs> years. No Sorry. mic technique. Sorry, I got welcome, I got woke. Greggy. <laughs> thank you, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave him a very long hug. Long, Lingered. Long and Lingered. deep. Mm-hmm. Long and deep. You smell great. Do I? Mm-hmm. Thank you. You don't smell like tzatziki. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like hero. you have to find the... Co- <laughs> <laughs> I can be your hero, babe. Can we, can we get back on message? Well, no, I mean, I think it's that uh, speaks for... I'm sure this is an uh, insightful, smart individual that would write in. You know, and call you dear leader. So he clearly, you know, he knows the lay of the land. Exactly. But if you're expecting anything more than a private conversation where he confides in you and maybe concedes he's not quite as ideologically certain as he comes across in public, you've done your job. That's about the most you can expect. And actually, we have uh, on We Are Libertarians the Ultimate Libertarian Sales Guide. It's a list of questions I wrote a few years back that is designed to um, walk someone through and flush someone out through their philosophical, their political philosophy. And the, the way the questioning is designed is I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who wouldn't arrive at the libertarian position. So I would, uh, we can send that to you in the email, through email or if you want to check it out. Yeah. So uh, just, go, just go search on the site, the ultimate sales The list account. of questions. Yeah. So uh, the Socratic method, Yep. as we like to call it. Please talk because I'm going to yawn. Yep. <laughs> anyway, well, so while he yawns and it spreads like a virus. I know, I got <laughs> Oh, that was, was like, a joke. Hey. Uh, that was acting. You guys are so <laughs> Who boring. Who thought that act? I didn't know. We got video, and now you bust out these acting chops. I know. God, and you're a cowboy. Hey, I've been I've been practicing. I got a green screen in my house. That's true. It, it I'll is. be on Alex Jones Infowars next week. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're already at got least that? the set? The set. I'll be on. The he's he sights you all the time. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> just hilarious. look out for that uh, video on YouTube. <laughs> we so got funny. globalists to beat. Listen, all right. Well, down let's, with the scum. Let's move on to our next topic. Donald Trump is uh, having a. Well, it's a, the, a regular week for Donald Trump. It's not a good or a bad week. A it's Trumpian just, week. It's just a Trump yes. week. Um, the the funniest thing we were we were in one of the we were doing one of the most. Uh, Whoa! Dang it! Uh, <laughs> sorry, she yawned and got me. Sorry. Um, the eight fifty two p.m. We here. we're just sitting uh, there bored out of our mind, and we get a text message from the Washington Post, and it says. Scaramucci has been fired after 10 days, and I howled with laughter because it was so funny. Uh, that was kind of the highlight of the week was that um, uh, what, what Anthony Scaramucci? Yep, Scaramucci. Yep. He, was, uh, he came in. He was appointed as the communications director. Find the leak. He, he was going to find the leak. He did this disastrous interview with uh, New Yorker. the New Yorker that we, we touched on at the end of the last episode. And uh, he... <laughs> He used a lot of foul language. He's a New Yorker. And he uh, f- he basically effectively pushed out Reince Priebus, and he pushed out um, uh, Sean Spicer. And uh, that was kind of the thing of his fate, because the person that was brought in to replace Reince Priebus, the chief of staff, was John Kelly. And John Kelly is a former general, and he looks like he is no nonsense. So I want to talk uh, about John Kelly and who he is, because I think that he is. This is going to be a dramatic shift in the Trump administration. Um, a little background: Reince Priebus was the six-year uh, head of the Republican Party, and he led the Republican Party through the uh, Tea Party revolt years. He was the great consensus builder. Absolutely, and he. I think he did a great job as. Oh, his the, chair. He, 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 M- Michael Steele uh, preceded him, and Michael Steele was somebody who was largely ineffective. And then uh, Reince Priebus won a highly contested race, and uh, nobody really knew who he was, as most people don't know who the chair of a party is. And he was so young. Yeah, and Priebus, uh, a lawyer by trade, was able to 
keep the Republican Party as a party functioning well, even while there were all these different ideological splits uh, throughout the government, throughout the states, throughout the all, all the different ranks of the Republican Party. And he was able to keep them competitive, <laughs> competitive through all of that turmoil at, well, as the chair of the Republican Party. And, I, and so... He he was also very fair towards Donald Trump, and that is why he ended up getting the uh, chief, of staff, chief of staff position. But right. he also was able to um, – uh, also, he and Sean Spicer were the only real connection to the swamp in the Trump administration. They were the institutional knowledge for the most part. Absolutely. And so they were, uh, they were the ones who had the relationships with people on Capitol Hill. Now, many people on Capitol Hill were just c dumbfounded because as the head of the RNC, he had a lot of good relationships, but so many balls were getting dropped over the, over the course of the last six months by Priebus, by uh, many people in the Trump administration, but they thought Priebus was going to be the one. So Pence stepped in, Vice President Mike Pence stepped in to manage a lot of those relationships, and a lot of people on the Hill uh, congressional Republicans feel that this was a good move because it was actually Reince Priebus who was not really pushing the president's agenda in an effective way. Bless okay, you. there, dear leader. Yeah, He's not I, the, but, but, I, Greg, I was waiting for Greg to jump in, and then he just... When, I mean, no, I was listening. I wanted you to be able to set it up because I yeah. know you have some clear... The thing with Reince Priebus is when President Obama won, he was heavily reliant on former Clinton staffers. That is why he had former mayor of Chicago, Rahm Man 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 Rambo Man Emanuel, yeah. who's arguably the most effective polit political operator in all of American politics. The man, has, he burns bridges, but you bring him in as a short-term solution to get whatever you're trying to do accomplished, and that's it. But he, wear, you know, he, he ends up burning the place down, but whatever you're trying to do is done. You need and that guy. Yeah, and so you, everyone needs that guy. They need that uh, awful, evil scapegoat that is effective. That's who the mooch was. Exactly. <laughs> Came in to fire Rent's penis. In just 11 days. <laughs> penis. Oh, yeah, that's the new 4chan <laughs> for Rent's Priebus. They call him the penis. Rent's penis. Mm -hmm. Good old pull. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> Rent's Priebus, though, the thing is, the Trump administration was, for the most part, either amateurs or... Um, or not amateurs, but just outsiders. they were outsiders. They weren't ever accepted as any part of any political party anywhere. <laughs> right. And they just l didn't even know, you know, if, if Rince Priebus and Mike Pence hadn't been in the room, if they needed to call the State Department, they wouldn't have known the number. Right. Yeah. Like it's just that simple. And so the, he was heavily reliant for that institutional knowledge to give him the lay of the land, tell him how things worked. However, you can't wear both hats. You cannot be the resource as well as the driving force for the you know being the connection to the Republican Party, which Trump was an outsider of as well, as well as Congress, as well as um, you know the regulatory agencies, he, you can't wear all those hats and be effective and push a legislative agenda and try to drive things home. It just isn't possible to do all those. And so he is great. He's very um, very nice guy. Very um, very much a consensus builder. He doesn't alienate anybody. He keeps all lines of communication open, never is incendiary or burns bridges. But that also means he's all carrot and no stick. And so right. he wasn't able to keep things in order because he's much more of a people pleaser and someone that is af not afraid, but just doesn't see it as advantageous to go around shouting marching orders more like a Steve Bannon. Right. Exactly right. So, Which is actually why Mooch got fired. Really? Why? Washington Post reported that it was um, Steve Bannon. <laughs> Uh, a White House administration official, of course unnamed, it is the Washington Post, said don't ever fuck with Steve, and that it was him who forced him out. Really? Yeah. After he called Priebus a paranoid schizophrenic. Steve, <laughs> Steve, some ridiculous shithead. But then something? he said that Steve Bannon tries to suck <laughs> his own cock. Oh, that's what it oh, He yeah. goes, I'm not Steve Bannon, I'm not trying to suck my own cock in the New Yorker interview. Oh, and so Bannon is the one who got rid He's of him. He's the Dark Lord. Oh. Okay. I mean, this guy's... Steve Bannon's the most well-read man in all of Washington D.C. Like, and he has no qualms about being evil. He loves it a little. Yeah, of course, like yeah. Cat. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, Cat in our Cat is Cartman. So, no. she, what are your thoughts about the Trump? Just period. Good guy, bad guy, okay guy. Actual, like literally actual Hitler. Donald, actual Donald Trump. President Trump. You... Oh. How do you? Are you conflicted? Yeah, obviously. I think everybody is. What are the good parts? I think a lot of people just hate him. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the problem. People just hate him. 
Like, my mom just hates him, not for any substantive reason, purely. But then again, look at Hillary Clinton. But yet she loves us. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Love, not like. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I think it's, you know, a lot of people hate him as a person. A lot of people who, you know, are educated don't like some of the things that he's doing. Mm-hmm. They may or may not. Um, they find it just crass and so white trash. I personally like him more than Hillary Clinton, not because of his policies, because he is more entertaining. He's yes. more fun to watch. He's a businessman. He's a showman. He's scripted reality all the time. Right. He's not a robot. He's like Jersey Shore of politics. Yeah, exactly. That's he's the exactly sitch. why. Kat is rewatching Jersey Shore with her uh, sorority mates. And it is great. <laughs> so Look at all you missed. All that culture. Uh, so young. You, you probably weren't allowed to watch it when you were a kid, when it was on live, right? No, it was uh, a lot of my friends weren't allowed to watch it. My see, my sister had like really strict TV, but then when it came to me, my parents were like, "Yeah, whatever." Didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> better try a different route. <laughs> no, I was next thing you know, she's on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talking about peeing in cups. Next so, thing you know, she's getting spray tan. You know, the cabs are here. Yeah. Yeah. Cabs are here. De- de- t-shirt time. Denim, denim, denim. It's the meatballs. <laughs> the meatballs are here. Sunday dinner, man. You never miss Sunday dinner. No, but uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny, Polly, no. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know. I think as a person, very fascinating. His family is very fascinating. Is there anything well. that you can singularly point to and say, you know what, I like that. I'm glad he did that. His I hair. love that he uses Twitter. I'm you went to his inauguration, that. so like, it's yeah. not like you're unfamiliar with him. Oh, no, I know who he is. Uh, honestly, I love that he uses Twitter. Okay, you love the direct access and oh, yeah. like, not going through the press to communicate? Yeah, I think that's hilarious. Coming from a media person, yeah. I think that is hilarious. Cause Cutting them out completely. <laughs> right, because it's my like, shit lord kind of persona coming out, right? Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I think that's hilarious. I also really liked the thing he put out. What was it? The, like, his first 100 days, he put out his, like, itinerary for the first day. Yeah, yeah. I th- just thought that was so... At the press conference, the first press conference where he led it, where he re- literally read at the press conference everything he had done. Yeah, yeah and he was, like, checklist. 8.40 a.m., having breakfast. Then, you know what I, Oh, you, you mean the that? itinerary for his day at each Very day at the residence. Day. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting. Just giving that kind of access? Yeah, because you never... Hear that kind of stuff. No, it's a threat. Usually, it's considered a nas- threat right. national security. And he's like, <laughs> people have been trying to kill me my entire life. Yeah, and I don't care. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's what I really like about it is, you know, a lot of people say it's not transparent. I, I mean, a lot of the stuff he does probably is not transparent, but and I that's think he's very necessarily so. Right. I think he's very entertaining. So entertainment would be the number your favorite thing about him. What would For be sure. your least favorite? <sighs> is there anything he does that makes your blood boil? I hate that he's so. And I guess you could argue that he's not extremely loyal to the GOP, but I hate that he's part of that in a way. He's kind of tied to it, even though he doesn't want to be. Even though they tried, spent $35 million in Florida desperately trying to get him not to be the nominee? Right. I yeah. hate that he's still kind of representing... You hate the GOP brand that much? No, I just hate how much hate he's getting, that a lot of people hate the GOP for no reason. And so that he's the recipient of it, even though he's not really a Republican? Exactly. Gotcha. That's what I hate, because you... Especially like in college, like people are like, "You're you're a Republican. That means you hate blah 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 you blah." You tarn feather gay people for fun. Exactly. That's so that's what? what I hate. Yeah. I hate the negativity that he brings. Okay. Just like if he ran as a libertarian, we so would you hate, hate the it. environment that he's brought. Not for necessarily sure. anything he's done. Just the sort of like toxic environment. Basically, and culture she hates right. winning. Is what she's trying to. Say. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! I I'm thought it was so, so entertaining. What about though? Is there any policy or anything that you're just like, you know, what? I outright disagree with that, and he's wrong. I mean, <laughs> probably the trans ban, like we talked about yeah. last episode. I don't think that's very... That's bullshit. It's the military. Yeah, but... You don't have the right to serve but the military. Here's the thing. I agree about, you know, it's the military. However, it's that's one of the... Even though I said I love how much he, you know, backpedals around the, the media. Yeah. That's one of those things. It's like uh, Mike Pence and Rifra. It's like, ah, uh, if your PR guy would have just been a little bit better... Positioned it more correctly. We would have... You know, that wouldn't have been a deal. Yeah, but then you don't get the uh, talking points. on Because everything Donald Trump does is for show. Oh, exactly. We've talked about this a so, yeah. hundred times. It's conflicting. Is it, so, the other th- so you don't like it that he, you know, felt decided to go this route on the tra- banning transsexuals from um, participating any further in joining the military. Right. But existing ones are fine. And then you don't like the toxic culture that's arisen because of him. Because you don't feel like he's the true, he's the scapegoat. For sure. Okay. For sure. And then you like that he speaks directly and cuts the press out rather than letting it be interpreted. Oh, yeah. For sure. Okay. So, positive, negative, if you had to say. Are you positive for Trump or are you negative for Trump? Wow. That is difficult. 
I don't know, Greg. What about you? Well, I, lo- I love every day. Like this is the greatest era of my Answer life. Answer the question. He asked you. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. I pass. That's fine. No. I don't care. I'm just no, literally I'm just asking. Kidding. Uh, like I said, glass jimmies. I cannot. You don't want to take a position. Do you don't stop. Blowback. Right. Here's the thing. Uh, once Friday hits, I have to go back to school, and I really would not like to. Be- you think you would? For, for sing- sure. For saying that he isn't Hitler. I lost so many friends because I went to the inauguration. Are you kidding me? Oh, I believe yeah. it totally. Not gonna lie. Are you serious? Oh, no. Not gonna lie. I read a few text messages that I should not have read, but I read them anyways. Of I'm not gonna say who, but people were talking about me with their friends from home or whoever saying, Ugh, so and so went or cat went to the inauguration, what a beep 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 beep. Yeah, not gonna lie. Oh yeah. No, I I, I was so. taken out you, of a wedding party. Here's the thing. How did you handle that? Uh, I bottled it up until it eats me alive slowly every night. Are you so still I friends with them? Yes. Like your piss, you bottled it up? Yeah, just like my piss. <laughs> I... Turns out I gave them a six-pack of red Solo cups <laughs> with aged urine. Let's just say I sold them a six-pack of Gatorade, <laughs> lemon-lime Gatorades, and it was Enjoy. not Gatorade. Yes, got Tenement's tears. Yes, your parents. No, um, that's, and here's the thing is literally when I leave college and I am able to have my own job and surround myself by choice with you guys and just you guys, then I'm not going to care. How do you feel about that, Greg? No, I mean, <laughs> it you, you've been a co- you know how it yeah, is. Yeah, no, I mean, I know what you mean. You're going to avoid any unnecessary conflict by rather than going out and being a lightning rod on these things. Exactly. Yeah, no. I get that. I get that. It's very What's the fun in that. I would never know. I've been stirring shit forever. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. That's why, and that's why half of me loves Donald Trump because how entertaining he is and how how much fun li- you the think the liberal he's tears are. Oh, he's but, right now behind a laptop as we speak, saying, giggling. "What can I do to piss them off today?" <laughs> but, no, that's what I love. Here's but. the thing, though, Cat, is that I've found as because I've always been very much like you in that respect where it's like, you know what, I just don't want to rock the boat and I don't want to deal with the hassle of this. I want to be well thought of. Uh, Right. Right. But over the last year or two, I have become so much happier by just saying exactly what I think. And and just it's other people's problems. And the people that, like, I haven't lost any friends. I mean, and... and None none that matter. And there are, no, and there are plenty of people who find my behavior disagreeable and my opinions disagreeable, but they're still my friends. Right. And what ends up happening is that you end up with a whole new group of friends because when you do say exactly what you think about Trump or a person or whatever, then they go, yeah, finally somebody's saying exactly what I think. Right, but you have to remember you're, what, 33? 33. You're 33. Your friends are all, for the most part, older. I'm 20 years old, and the people that I surround myself daily don't get that. And they won't get that for another 10 years. And it's the most intense time in your life where people are either most political and most ideological. And, like, and angry, it, angry, like ideologically angry. angry. And was, it just so happens to be this is the election that it falls under. You know, if this were the... Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. Like Gerald Ford election, right? Oh, yeah. This is I'm a sure. one-off of it. This is an anomaly. I was, no, exactly. I was, I was the college Republicans president in 2004. I campaigned for George W. Bush. He in raised the, money for Dick Cheney. In the heat, <laughs> he in, did 9-11. In the heat of the Iraq <laughs> war. Or, trust me. I get it, but I, I had reveled I'm in out it. I was like... I was <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, we all do things in college we're not proud of. I know. Some you, of us... Raise money for Dick Cheney. Right. She pees in cups. Fat girls. Arguably, that's way worse. <laughs> Fat girls. <laughs> hey, I, I like to drink in college, man. Listen, we all had a Wait, slime. are you calling me fat? No, 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 no. I didn't. No, that was completely unrelated. He was, uh, to he was talking about what he regrets doing Just in because college. Because I pee in cups doesn't mean. No, I'm kidding. It doesn't mean that I'm wheelchair bound. <laughs> <And> when <laughs> when I, I can't get out of my hover around. I, I didn't really care what you were saying until just then when the insecure sorority girl came out and you're like, are you calling me fat? <laughs> well, that's like when I said you had diabetes yesterday and you got upset. I was like, no, I didn't get upset. I was like, he was upset. I was like, I do not have diabetes. Fuck you. Yeah. I, I don't want to have diabetes, not because I don't want to deal with diabetes. I just don't have to deal with Bittner. Oh, I thought having, you meant like needles or something. You no, yeah, I know, like something insulin. very logical. Having diabetes, I could deal with that. Having yeah. diabetes while being friends with Keto Bittner, I can't. He would save you, and you know it. I can't <laughs> handle it. He'd, we'd be too close. Would you want to be saved? That's the real question. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like, With this day and age. That's the way well, the benefits and costs of each side. Now that, 
No. But, uh, what, what's the sound of that? Oh, that's the donut truck backing up to Spangle's apartment. Yeah, he decided to just put an IV of maple syrup right in. <laughs> He's got a crispy cream oven. Yeah. <laughs> he puts his head in it every night, no. wishing Keto Bittner would leave him alone. No, but I think, you know, going back to that whole thing, it's as objective as I can be. I love how entertaining and shit posting he is. I love it, right? It speaks I to you. hate, but at the same time, some of his PR tactics are very annoying because it gives... Such as? Like, you know, just blatantly tweeting out the trans ban. When, if you look at it, it's just like riffra. Bla- you know, He's trying to it. provoke and create a storm. Right, which and some parts is very funny, but at the same time, it's like, okay, now because you're so, you know, tied in a way to the GOP, now yeah, you're just giving... Everybody thinks I hate trainees because I like you and went to your inauguration. <laughs> right, right, right. Hong Kong, tranny so, props, now right. I'm sorry I'm late. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but sorry, do you get what I mean? <laughs> sorry to throw your board off the yeah. balcony. Yeah. Tranny yeah. problems. Hong Kong. Yikes. No, but you, you kind of get what I mean. Oh, I get exactly what yeah. you mean. I get yeah. it. And being 20, it's totally different to look at it through that lens. So. Yeah, I mean, how's it feel to have the art of the deal be older than you? Wait, how old is the old art of the deal? Uh, 1984, right? Oh my goodness, that's There's older a, than Taylor Swift. Somewhere over there is a first edition. Yeah, right it's, there. it's right there. Yeah. Oh, wow. In a place of honor. Don't pee on that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use a swipe. I like that now. Cat is marking things. She is. That's what she <laughs> does. She's speaking of that. I she's have to pee her so bad. Go. No, no. Go pee. No, no, no. Me first. No, it's okay. Seriously, we can pause for a second. No, 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 no. we're not. We don't need to pause. We go. G- give me that bottle. Go. I gotta, I'm gonna top it off. Seriously, you're not gonna go focus here. I know. I'm here. Not. Go. I could actually. Do you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. No. Dare. D- I dare you to pee in that bottle right now. No, because I got to drink it on the way home. If okay. it were disposable. Yeah, if it were disposable. <laughs> yeah, go pee. We pee during the middle of the episode all the time. It's Ooh. it's what we do here. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. She. Thank you. <laughs> oh. She you know just... what's hilarious? I what? actually. Here. I've actually have peed on this because I wore it in the <laughs> lake. On 4th of July, and I peed all over Lake Monroe. Spangle, what would be your... Uh, so, obviously, we all feel the same, given we're all, you know, incendiary, polarizing people that enjoy creating a storm. Sure. So that's going to be where we all agree. Ted, I'm sure... I mean, you were on the Trump train before anybody. I, yeah, well, I wasn't you on the watching, train. I, were... I, 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 well, wait a minute. I wasn't actually on the train policy wa- or what no. I, I, I I called that he would win. I'm you enjoyed like, him. I'm like, I was Scott Adams before Scott Adams. Todd Todd uh, t- Todd Todd Tad watched right right side broadcasting before anybody knew what right side broadcasting was. You're goddamn was. right, it. And I'd send it. I was like, you guys watching this? Are, are you? You watching were watching these the rallies? rallies for two hours, multiple rallies a day at night. And I the was rally- like, they're great entertainment. Before he the was snake. even before he was even the uh, the nominee. I mean, I'm talking back like when there were 17 people in the Republican Party, and I'm like. This dude's got 13,000 people out on a Wednesday night, at, and he made him wait four fucking and he'd hours already done to three more. in a hangar. I'm like, this dude's jet setting. How, are you, how can you compete with a guy who's flying his private plane around, pulling up to a hangar, dodging assassination okay. attempts by crazy liberals, giving bedtime snake story speeches? I mean, this is the greatest <laughs> thing of all time. I'm like, he's not even talking policy. The only thing he's saying is, I'm going to build a wall, and... Screw Muslims, I'm going to ban them, and then that's it. I mean, that like he's just, he's got three talking points, and they're all just, the crowd goes nuts when you hear it, and you're like, oh, this is this is building. He really speaks to you. And the, No, but he spoke to the people who were there, and then you could all, also... It was the emotional uh, frenzy, not the content. Absolutely. He know Donald Trump is a genius, because he's always done this. Someone else has done this before, by the way. Yeah. Who? Another great leader. Hitler over okay. Germany. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> no, Adolf Hitler. No, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry God. God. Hit, the fra- Hitler's campaign slogan was Hitler over Germany. The reason what that means, it wasn't because it was pledged loyalty to Hitler before Germany. It was because he was the first to use air travel. And right. so he would fly yeah, around yeah. all over Germany, and he would just go for two hours and rant. And people <laughs> would get worked into this psychosis. And got, people have done interviews, and they said, after watching him speak, he owned me. Well, and, and It didn't matter what he said. Hitler. To the crowd too. I mean, he would go to Trump would go to wherever he's at. I mean, we're bringing coal jobs back. We're he'd bringing tell he became whatever room he walked into. Absolutely, and, and that's, that's been what, done before. And that's the best way to be if you're a politician. It is. If you go Hitler a career on Netflix, it is single handedly the best documentary on Hitler that has ever been produced. It is <laughs> it is it go, and I've seen literally them all. It is. It walks you through all of this, and it talks about the early campaigns and what he did to kind of build the the Nazi movement, and the beer hall punt like speeches. The, and what you realize is there are so many parallels between Hitler and Trump, Trump. Carried a list of like his tactics next to him on the campaign trail. Yeah, like it, well, it it obviously worked. 
No, but if I mean, you get it, elected, I mean, when you get someone not to commit to you on an emotional level, you can say whatever you that's want. That's what you right. have to do. You have to appeal to their 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 one emotion. Scott Adams talks about that. I don't know if anybody's listened to the Scott Adams. How Great he broke troll. It down. On, Dilbert, on Joe Rogan. No, uh, he had the Joe Rogan podcast, and then he had one with Sam Harris too, where he absolutely just tore Sam Harris new asshole. Hmm. And uh, which I like Sam Harris, but like he is so when it comes to politics, he's just he's so. Blind, like he's got his blinders on. He can't. Sam Harris he, is a moron. No, he's not. He's yes, actually he pretty smart. No, he's a dumb dumb. No, you don't like him because he's an atheist. That's right. Yeah. He's an idiot. I know. <laughs> no, but anyway, he he explains the uh, what happens when you uh, pander to people's feelings, and not just you don't have to get all their issues. You just have to get their top issue, whatever they feel. You know, I mean, fifty percent of single them. issue voters. Yeah, right. Absolutely, and that's what Trump did. He played. Played to the wall. He played to immigration. He played for people who lost jobs. Whether that <laughs> Christians, which which that kind of ties in as well. And then the Corinthians Christi- too. I had the cracker and the wine. I've done it before. He's played. It, he's I'm played. Saved. It, he's done his entire career. He just plays to the room, like you said, and it works. And oh, then yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, oh, Trump's a liar. He lied about this. He lied about that. What's he actually lying about? He's lying about. Oh, his crowd size? What the hell does that have to do with you're that? Li- you're upset you know? a politician lied to you? Yeah, I mean... You want an emotional support dog? <laughs> he's not a politician, but he is at the same time. He used, I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. I don't know. But So the good, though, like, he, the economy's done really well. Dow's top 22,000. Yeah, 22,000. Oh, yeah, unemployment's all-time lows. Seeing people just... No, the only thing that's lagging is wage growth, and they're not sure why we have such low unemployment, and we haven't seen the uptick in wages. Like, we're still waiting for those to rise. That's what right. usually happens next. And so it's the economy is booming. <laughs> booming. Really? It's, 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 yeah, it's, as, nobody reports that. Right. And like a lot, now a lot of it is a you know, artificial boom from the real estate industry overheating right now as you see property values go up. Because there was no expansion in supply for eight years after mm-hmm. the financial crisis. But sorry. And, uh, but so he, he, it isn't Donald Trump that's no. single-handedly you know, said economy rise. Right. You know, he can't do that. But he also, uh, the way the economy functions is all forecasting. Yep. And so it's about basically future expectations and trump has been hugely he's the best president in my lifetime in as far as um uh putting a halt to the regulatory estate that and like stability he's, yeah for, and then he also wars. right he also has so far looked foreign policy wise he's been really good i know this sounds crazy but i expected mass chaos with everyone frozen in fear yeah and that's not yeah. easy to handle as a citizen but that's the ideal because everyone's in paralysis and no one moves. And it's great for the market because the market can, if, if we're going to have peace, it's the best time. Right. And, and so he's also created the expectation that he is going to be so pro-American business. People don't even know what that means, but they have an idea. And so it's the idea that America is open for business for, for future investment and you won't be penalized for investment income. Yeah. And so he's done a really good job with that. And so the Fed controls a lot of this and it's not all his – Clearly, all, everything shouldn't go to him. Mm-hmm. But just purely stopping the regular, uh, giving the, uh, you can't pass a new regulation without cutting two. And then also, as, as he's been it, very stable as far as what he supports economically. As Anthony says, he telegraphed corporate tax cuts and regulatory restraint. For and every, so that's all off future growth. You yeah. want you want one new regulation, get rid of two in your department. Right, and that's fantastic because it creates a mindset that's self fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And so that is where an area where I think he's excelled. I think he's excelled in foreign policy. And I know people think I'm crazy. I'm an outside the box thinker on foreign policy because the reality is there's no such thing as a peace, a world of peace. The only way to get there is through frozen in fear because someone's going to always be moving or positioning themselves to grow or maintain future power, which inevitably inevitably will result in conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Thucydides trap. We touched on the madman policy too, like the madman theory. Yeah. And that's whether he he is crazy or not. I mean, he's experienced. It's irrelevant whether you're crazy or not. Absolutely. (laughs) As long as the outcome is peace, you're doing wonderful. Absolutely. And so I think he's done a very effective job of playing the madman or being the madman and making everyone say, I don't want to move because I'm not entirely sure he won't drop a mob on our capital. Yeah, I mean, he'll just right. nuke some city out in the middle of nowhere. Randomly. Yeah, just for, no, <laughs> just for shits and giggles. We it's have this thing sitting pitch. around for 16, 000, <laughs> 16 years. Why yeah. not drop it on somebody? He might just hit like a Siberian like for abandoned army base oh, yeah. just on a random Wednesday with no announcement. He might nuke Chernobyl just to, you know. <laughs> just do it again? Yeah. want to make sure we got him this time. <laughs> Speaking of got him this time, Spangle, <laughs> you are going to enjoy your shower tonight. Oh, did you pee in my shower? 
peed in a shampoo bottle. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Pranked. His hair is going to be silky sterile. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, yeah, urine is sterile. Okay. Well, there's I, I've read articles on this. Now, Alex Jones disagrees. <laughs> urine is sterile. You can you can it just we'll it's it's when it sits out that the bacteria start to, to grow. Collect, yeah. yeah. One time there was mold in a cup. I'm kidding. Oh, you, the, we we missed the grossest part of all of this is that your roommates are so okay with it that they empty your pee cups. Oh yeah, my my one of my roommates, Jordan, said, "Oh, I went." She <laughs> used the name. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. No, she they was like, listen. "Oh, I've got to." Uh, can I can I borrow that dress or whatever? And I was like, "Yeah, my room's unlocked. Go and get it." She goes in and gets it. Texts me, "Got it." Also dumped out your pee cup for you. Yeah, I was. That was a little too far for me. That's a violation of personal property. No, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that is my urine. I was saving it for a drug. It's test my body, later. my choice. I right. was not throwing that out. <laughs> it's like wine; it has to sit for a while. I'm going to drink it later. This is a 1972 Anagnos. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hilarious. So funny. Home but yeah, enjoy your shower tonight, Spangle. <laughs> that you purt's gonna monster. be a little tangy. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, so, Spangle, what have you has just outright? made you livid or angry i i don't think there's been anything in the presidency at all in the presidency i think the uh the bombings early on the moab and all that kind of stuff it's like i i was very uneasy as a non-interventionist i was very easy uneasy right. with that like the uh the bombing of syria I I I'm glad that that didn't escalate into world. Although it has not, well, the jury's still out. But I'm glad yeah, that it has not. not. Wood. That's yeah. the thing is everything's on the brink at all times. E exactly. So th that you. that they're just. I made my peace with Trump when he won. So <laughs> I spent a year and a half railing against the guy and saying what a piece of garbage he is and. Saying like this guy's not as libertarian as everybody thinks, and and he's not. I he's mean, by no means a libertarian. No, the like he's done some good things like Gorsuch. I think the Gorsuch nomination is huge. Is so big for for libertarian thinkers, and he is a great replacement for Scalia. And let's all pray that Kennedy does actually follow through in the next three years to 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 leave. Um, I I I'm I. I'm so jaded about Republicans that like, it's hard to give them the, a <laughs> the idea that we have spent eight years campaigning against the Obamacare, the Obamacare, the repeal of Obamacare, the guy who ran in 2008 on a repealing and preventing Obamacare came and actually was the one who is the deciding vote to keep Obamacare in place. Uh, I mean, we should be n uh, completely. Uh, nonplussed by John McCain's behavior. Well, he does have a mental disorder. <laughs> um, hey, I just like people that weren't captured. <laughs> <laughs> I like people who don't wreck, burn down entire cruise ships or whatever. The you're <laughs> I, I, I just savage. So I don't. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's been like when he won. It was just like okay, he's just going to do the same stuff he did during the campaign. Like I wasn't even like the grabber by the pussy stuff. Like. <laughs> As a girl, and I can say this because I'm a girl, I did not care. Really? And no, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe he said that." Okay. To that point, you wrote a song about how Hitler <laughs> killed the Jews exactly. in middle school during a project. Right. But You're here, probably a bad test market. Right, but here's the thing: if every single person in this world, if we had, it just so happened that you know we never had um, anything that JFK said on when he was. However old on tape, you know what I mean. Right. Well, he was banging Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah. So was his brother. They were him. Eiffel Tower. Exactly. So it's just like, okay, this was the first time that we didn't have a picture perfect, you know, pure social media guy elected. Yeah, Manchurian right. candidate. Right. And it's just everyone was so up. And I can say this because I'm a woman. I did not care because <laughs> Way to play if, the card. Right. Right. I know. Finally, I got to play a card. <laughs> <laughs> that Greek card's been Greek sitting cards. in your back pocket Woo. forever. It is warm. From sitting back there, no. But you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, God, there's nothing worse than everybody talking about that just makes me condemning rape. It's like, shut up. Honey, he's not going to grab you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, I mean, did you, I mean, as a as a woman and as a college-age woman, like, did, was there a part of you that like, yeah, of course guys talk like that. I'm not an idiot. 
Yeah. Here's the thing. If somebody recorded me, oh. <laughs> the things I say. Hate oh speech. <laughs> Hate you know what I mean? Speech. And that just goes for anybody. Like, Not I. Oh, right. Trump right. had a roast on Comedy Central where yeah. he was like, fuck all you, I'm a billionaire. That was like his final words. Like, And that never came out? Like, what? Right. Like, so nobody it's gives just, a shit. It's Donald Trump. And now more than ever, you know, because the age we live in, and especially within, like, we get the first, like, round of... Uh, candidates who are running who grew the primary up process right who grew up in the social media age oh gotcha, so I, yeah, I guess millenni- my age we j- a gallup just showed uh 2020 millennials will be the largest segment of the voting populace mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about running though oh you mean as candidates right gotcha because when that happens and when your entire when you get to the point where I, we're voting for politicians whose entire life has been documented online it's just going to be we're going to laugh at you know, Google CEO everybody... said everyone should be entitled to the government should allow everyone to do a entire digital identity change. Yeah, that's that's Trump's Swap. entire life though. Trump technically could be the first person who he's uh, lived in the public eye. He made it, he made it okay from the very beginning. That's I guess a great you could point. Say. He you made know, it okay I mean, so to he... be a deviant. Yeah, I guess that's true. But that's he's... not a disqualifier. Ask Kid Rock. But right. he's not a deviant. Like if you look at Trump, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. No. He right. just says crazy shit and he's from New York. It's not even really that crazy, it's just his personality. Right. You know, I mean that's a New York New that's, York people from New York are it's a different aggressive. breed of people. Right. Like I mean it's it's not, it's not Midwest a Midwest Trump. All right, country folk. Come on, have have a seat. Yeah. But I, I and I'm just saying we're gonna I bet <laughs> on the you ranch? <laughs> ten, fifteen years we're just gonna look back and say, Okay, people were up in arms about that. Here's the Snapchat video of Senator so and so. When that happens, uh, that's a, there's wow. not going to be private. Like if if you're running, but can you not... imagine a campaign attack ads with Snapchats? Oh, it's going to be great. I know it's going to be delicious. And guess what? And it is not. It is going to <laughs> create a culture of savagery. Right. So, cat, say what you want. <laughs> but I'm we're saying, all fucked anyways. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying though, like you don't want necessarily a civil discourse environment where people are just blatant shit posting, but in real life. Right. right, but there's not going to be. It's going to be hard to blackmail anybody. It used to be blackmail. Oh, we've got you know we've He's, got dirt on somebody that's under the. Anymore, it's going to be. Yeah, I said you, that. What do you have? Yeah. What do you, okay, yeah, I've got a porno. Like, I mean that. That's what you're going to have. Wait, you do? Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Well, so I, it, it's just when. We- care at all and we're just going to focus completely on you know substance substance you're saying that shit lording is going to lead us to the civil the civics ideal of only caring about the policy actual policy yeah that would be quite the underdog tale no be exactly because look at trump he said all those comments and he was still it's an interesting theory he was elected on other things but the backdoor shit lording your way to Policy discussion. Trump also had a perfect storm of running against the shittiest candidate of all time. Very true, very true. But here's the other thing. I don't even think it goes as far as shitlording. I think it's literally humans now, you know, we people who went to, I don't freaking know, high school with Gerald Ford said, oh, I saw him beat up a kid. Okay, that's like, whatever. Well, like, Lyndon Johnson leaked it to a reporter to ask Gerald Ford if he still fucked goats. Yeah. <laughs> and, he got, and his campaign manager said, you know that isn't true. He goes, I know. I just want to hear him deny it. Right. But when you go take it a step further, oh, not oh, when I was back in eighteen, whatever, I saw him beat somebody up. No, it's going to be here are these uh, college friends of college Twitter account. Look at all these things. <clears> yeah, here. Uh, yeah, Tommy Lauren, Tommy Lauren, Tommy Lauren, yeah, yeah. The uh, she's quite the see like that. I don't know if I'm going to be all about a civil like a discourse environment where it's just back and forth sharing of embarrassing Snapchat videos and clips. And then that's it's what so runs stupid. out as ads well, during at some point, the daily news. But I think at some point, it's just going to, it's not even going to matter anymore. Everybody's just going to go, all right, I, I'm at that point you now. You think everyone's I, going to desensitize? Well, oh, it's yeah. already yeah. got to that already, point. Already at that point. Look, in, look at the, in, in the Trump like presidency, it's already gotten to that point. Because they keep running these ads, oh, Trump said this, Trump said that. That's all they run on CNN and Fox News all day long. But eventually you get a breakdown because then your two camps become so team-oriented they're even the idea of listening to the other side is as it on a, like you know conceding basic facts is basically a betrayal of your team. Mm-hmm. So it's a complete breakdown of any type of conversation happening. I see in the hills and valleys. I, it's going to bounce back at some point. It uh, can't keep going. 
Yeah. It can't keep going, but we're outraged beyond belief. I think it's either, yeah, I agree. Because here's here's the thing. We're either going to have, there's going to be two types, two world possibilities. We're either going to have the people who, you know, did all these, even worse than saying grab them by the pussy, these crazy videos, Really actually and, bad things. Really actual like bad things. R. Kelly that, running for Congress. That have been, right, that have been, you know, captured online. We're going to have that. Number two, that please generation. say water world. No, or number two, we're going to Water have... World. We're going to have a, just an increase in boring vanilla politicians who grew up, uh, like my age people, who grew up never going to a party, never putting themselves out there saying, I don't have any embarrassing Snapchats or embarrassing posts about me because I led a boring life. So, you know what I mean? Never underestimate the Republican Party's ability to field boring candidates. Exactly. Oh, but, yeah. but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And So are we going to elect real people who have made mistakes and we have no. documentations of those real mistakes? Based on your or assessment not. of the existing Congress, what would we you say we elect? I think... Watered-down, whitewashed versions of what we idealize ourselves as. No? Well, who's been able to hide what they've done? Right, but when it comes, when it's like my generation who is running for things, it's gonna be the robots running everything by the time you're. Yeah, that's probably true. Well, I don't know. Really? And so, yeah. I don't know. That, I love it. I enjoy it. But part of me worries because once you hate someone and once it becomes a standoff 